Principles of Accounting, Chapter 4, Homework Tips. I'm going to walk through the homework and give you some tips on how to complete it correctly and hopefully a little more efficiently. Kind of speed you up a little bit if make sure you don't get stuck. So we're going to go ahead and start with question one. This question is on preparing closing entries from the ledger. So what we're going to do to be able to get these closing entries, we have balances, right, from our trial balance. That, that tells us what the, the balances are in our ledger accounts. And we're going to go ahead and close out the revenue first. And then, so this is the revenue account here. And then this, these are the expense accounts. So as we're closing revenue, what we're doing is we are debiting revenue. Revenue accounts typically are credit balance. So in order to close them, what you do is you do the exact opposite and equal entry to the balance, right? So if you have a $14,000 credit balance on your trial balance to close it out, you then need to do a debit for $14,000. The revenue doesn't go away. What happens is the revenue is then entered as a credit on the income summary account, which is a really a uh, short-term account, very temporary. Only This account only has a balance when we're doing closing. So that's going to be the revenue. The expenses, of course, are the going to be the same. Uh, you could have multiple revenue accounts. You could have multiple expense accounts. In this example, we have multiple expense accounts. So we're going to go ahead and credit each of them for their balance on the trial balance. And then, uh, which is going to be the adjusted trial balance, right? That's what we close those balances, and then we're gonna add them up and debit the income summary account for all of those expenses. Next thing we do is we close our income summary to capital. So the income summary is the difference between the debits and credits that we just closed into the income summary account. So what is the balance in the income summary account is the next question that we ask. The balance is 3,300 credit balance. So in order to close it, we debit it, exact opposite and equal, and then that credit balance or the net income from our uh, income summary goes into capital and increases the capital account by 3,300. Last step in the closing process, we go and look in our withdrawal account, which should be a debit balance. We close it by crediting it, crediting it, exact opposite and equal, and then we debit the capital account for that $850 which we withdrew. That lowers the capital account for withdrawals. Going on to question two. First, let's talk about, in my other video, I talk about worksheets. We do a couple of worksheet problems in the homework assignment set. And really what the worksheets are, are they're an opportunity for us to put everything in order, the whole accounting cycle really. Uh, on this one specifically, what we're going to do is we're going to just focus on that last uh, few steps in the accounting cycle. So we're going to go ahead and build the income statement and we're going to do some entries on this worksheet that will mimic us closing the accounts to get everything in balance. So let's go ahead and do that. We start off with adjusted trial balance figures. So th this is the, that's what we use when we create our financial statements. So that's what we're gonna do. Everything on top here is going to go to the balance sheet and statement of owner's equity. Everything from cash all the way down to the withdrawal account. Starting with revenues, which is plumbing fees earned, all the way down through our expenses here, those are gonna go into the income statement columns here. If it's a, for example, if it's a credit here in, in plumbing fees earned, that's going to remain a credit over in the income statement uh, columns, go in the credit column there. So we go ahead and add the columns down and that'll give us our totals. Totals for debits in the income statement, that's all the expenses. Totals for credits in the income statements, that's all of our revenues. The difference between these two we then put down here on the net income line. Revenues are larger than expenses, so that's net, uh, that's a revenue account, that's a net income, I should say. In order to balance these out, what we want to do, we want to have these bottom totals balancing. 
So they have to equal each other, debits and credits. In order to get these debits and credits to balance an income, the income statement, we debit the amount of net income, and then we balance. So whatever you do over here in the income statement side, you're going to do the exact opposite over in the balance sheet side, which is going to be a credit. We're going to take that net income, and we're going to go ahead and credit that over here on the balance sheet and statement of owner's equity. Basically what this is like is it's like adding that net income into your equity and that will balance everything out uh, with these two sets of columns. Let's go ahead and go on to question number three. So at the top here what we're doing is we're going to take our uh, this data up top here and we're going to find our net income. So it's going to be all of our revenues minus expenses. That's the way we find that out. If it's a positive number, if it's going to be net income. If it's a negative number, it's a net loss. In this case, it's a net income. Put that number down here. And then we're going to close all that. We're going to go through the closing process. So we're going to start with our revenue and close our revenue out to net in, or to income summary. Close all of our expenses, which we have a list here. We're going to sum all these expenses up and close that to income summary. Then we're going to find the difference between these two numbers here which should be the same thing that we did up here at the top, right? It's basically going to be our net income or our net loss. In this case, it's net income. So we're going to go ahead, go ahead and it's going to be a credit balance as we, as we do this, right? Credit balance meaning revenues are higher than expenses. We're going to close that credit with a debit and then uh, to the income summary. That closes income summary account. Our capital account will get the credit which will increase it for the net income. Here's some calculations for that below. Your numbers may be different than the numbers we have here because the the uh, homework assignment does, is algorithmic so it'll pull up different numbers. Same format for everybody, different numbers that way uh, we can be uh, we can do our own work and, and learn on our own there. Let's move on to number four. So here's another worksheet. Our worksheet is going to begin with unadjusted trial balance. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these adjustments up above here. We're going to do those adjustments just like they were journal entries, right? We're going to do the adjustments for these things down here in the adjustments column. So each adjustment will have a debit and a credit. Just like in chapter three, that's the adjustments chapter, right? So we're gonna do that. What we learned in chapter three here in the adjustments column, they should be balanced at the bottom. Unadjusted trial balance balances. Once we do our adjustments, they will balance as well because each adjustment we make will have a debit and a credit balancing. And then we're gonna go ahead and go across each row, each account. And if it doesn't have an adjustment, then we go ahead and just put, like for example, cash is 18,000, no adjustment. So we go ahead and do uh, the 18,000 here, debit, debit. Office supplies will have an adjustment. It's a debit balance. We have an adjustment of $1,000, which will leave us with a balance of $1,400 on the debit side. The opposite side of this adjustment is going to be to office supplies expense down here. We have office supplies expense of 19,000. We have our debit, which increases that 19,000 expense to 20,000. So once we do all that and pull them over, so we're going to start with our unadjusted, do our adjustments, pull them over to the adjusted trial balance figures, that should balance. Then we're going to go ahead and build, pull it across for our financial statements. So we're going to pull the bottom here, start in our delivery fees earned. That's going to be the beginning of our income. We're going to go ahead and pull them across here to income statement. Revenues on the credit side. Uh, expenses on the debit side. Then we're going to go ahead and pull the top numbers over to the balance sheet and uh, the equity, statement of owner's equity. At the bottom, again, like we did before, we're going to go ahead and take the difference here between our debits and credits for our income statement. Wherever the balance is, we're going to do exact and opposite to balance things out. Same thing over in the balance sheet side. We're going to take that net income or net loss as the case may be. This one's net income. And we're going to take it over and we're going to put it into the credit side. 
and it should balance everything out as well. So these bottom numbers are going to balance. Here's some figures that show that balancing calculation. Now we're going to go ahead and do closing. So this has, that was the required one tab. Required 2A is going to be the actual closing where we take our revenue and close it. Take our expenses on the next journal entry and close them. Find the difference, which should be the same number that we had back here, right? The same number right here, our net income, to close our income summary. And then at the bottom, we're going to close our withdrawal account. Which, which can be found um, right here, right? So that's, there's the withdrawals. We're going to go ahead and close that, and that will be 2A. 2B is where we uh, figure out what this closing does to capital. So the capital account is going to start back on our worksheet. We start with our capital account balance right here. For me, it's $124,192. This pulls across, right? All the way across, it doesn't change on our worksheet, but what happens is, is really this adjustment that we do down here at the bottom will be added to it. We also close the withdrawal account, which we will be subtracted from it or reduce it. So this is gonna be our capital balance, plus our net income minus our withdrawals. That's what we're gonna have here. And that, that's what the calculation shows us here. So let's go ahead and move on. So this we're gonna, we're preparing closing entries and post closing trial balance, right? So, so far we've had the unadjusted trial balance. We've had the adjusted trial balance. And now after we close, we're going to have the post closing trial balance. So the, the post closing trial balance, the, quick, the trick with that is, post-closing trial balance will have no temporary accounts, only permanent accounts. That means no uh, expenses, no revenues, no withdrawals, and no income summary. Those are all temporary accounts. So we're going to get rid of all those. After the closing process, those will all be gone. All we'll be left with are basically our assets equals liabilities plus equity. And the only thing in equity in after post-closing, after the closing process, is capital capital account. So here's our actual closing entries, closing revenue, closing expenses, closing income summary, closing withdrawals. Then on required two, we're going to go ahead and take the balance, which will be the same balance up top here, right? So our all of our assets will be the same, our depreciation and all that will be the same. The only thing that will change is our capital balance will change because we're going to add the net income to it we're going to subtract the withdrawals from it. And then it should balance down here at the bottom. So here's another one. This one lines out the preparation of financial statements. So this is going to be the, the post-closing kind of financial statements here. Oh, what we're going to do, though, first is we're going to do our income statement. S same idea, right? We're going to come up with net income. This net income, is this figure is going to be important because as we close, this number is going to come back to us again, right? Because part of the closing process is closing the income summary account. That will be our net income, right? So that's num that's step one is we prep the income statement to get our net income. Then we go over to number two here. And sure enough, here we see it in our statement of owner's equity. We've got our beginning capital balance. Net income is added in. Withdrawals are subtracted. This is the same thing you go through when you close. And here's our new capital balance that will be shown in our post-closing or closing uh, capital balance for the year. So, so here's our bigger problem sets. And this is going to be the most comprehensive uh, problem sets you're going to have in the entire class, chapter four. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically do journal entries for everything. We've got our adjustments. We've got our normal journal entries during the, during the year, opening and opening the business. Then we're going to do our normal business and all of our expenses, revenues, everything that we're going to have. And then at the end, we're going to do our adjustments. And then we're going to, so here's our journal entry accounts. So all of these, quite a few of them. Here at the bottom though, right? So at the beginning, to begin with, we're gonna have just our normal journal entries. So this is the beginning of our company. These are our expenses, uh, purchasing supplies and, and all of these things, re earning revenue. Down here towards the bottom, what we're gonna have is on April 30th, we're gonna have our adjusting entries. That's the end of the month adjustments. Then right here 
as well as April 30th, number 16, we're going to start closing. We're going to close things out. We're going to close our revenues. We're going to close our expenses. Close income summary to capital. And then at the very end, we're going to close our withdrawals to capital as well. Those are all the journal entries that we've learned so far in the class. This is compre a comprehensive problem. Okay, we're going to then take, uh, we're going to put the right accounts onto our income statement and, and find out what our net income is. We're going to also do that to own, statement of owner's equity and balance sheet. Comprehensive, right? We're going to take everything and, and put it together. Post-closing is going to tell us what accounts we have on the post-closing statement. It lines out all of the accounts, but not all of them are on the post-closing statement. Only those that are on the post-closing statement are going to show up here as numbers. Permanent accounts, those all show up on the post-closing. All the temporary do not. So all the temporary are not going to have numbers. Trick is here in capital, right? Capital is our beginning capital balance. This is something you can look back on your statement of owner's equity to see. Beginning capital balance plus our net income minus our withdrawals equals this ending capital balance that we're going to put here on post-closing trial balance. Final problem. Final problem. And then uh, really beyond chapter four, uh, there's some tricky stuff. Chapter five, six, seven, eight, nine to end the term. Beyond chapter four, though, students tell me and, and I agree that really a lot of the busy work for the term is done. Okay, You're going to have some worksheets and things to fill out as you're learning new different uh, accounting applications. But a lot of just the, the grunt work is going to be done as soon as you're, you're done with Chapter 4 and the, and the first exam. So we're, we're almost there. Hang in there. So here's our final problem. Again, comprehensive. So we're going to, in our journal entries, Right, we're going to have year end. This, these are some adjustments. And then we begin right down here on number uh, seven. We're closing, doing our closing process. Close revenue, close expenses, close income summary, and closing the withdrawals. Then we go ahead and, again, build our financial statements. Our financial statements are going to be created from the adjusted trial balance. And so that's important to know. Your adjusted trial balance is where you create your financial statement. Then once your financial statements are made, really that's at the, at that point is when you do the closing and you create your, you get your uh, post-closing trial balance. And then here at the end, the worksheet is going to be just like our worksheet that we did before. It's going to show everything that you did in your adjustments. These are going to be entries that are back in your journal entry tab. Same numbers, same accounts. So you're just going to line them up here. Same numbers, same accounts. They're going to balance. Pull them across. All these balances here should equal your adjusted trial balance that you had before as well. Then we're going to go ahead and pull them through to our financial statements. Look down at the bottom here on, on the first total row, and that's where we're going to calculate our net income. Exact opposite and equal. We'll balance everything out from our net income. And then we're going to do the, do the same thing by closing it to the credit side of our balance sheet, owner's equity. That will balance everything out over here. And then you're done. Feel free to contact me, uh, send me an email, set up a, an online virtual office meeting with me, come by my office, whatever you need. I'll, I'm more than willing to help. Uh, have a good day and we'll talk to you later. Thanks.